great day today is. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mamas. Come on, let's put it together again. Well, you worked hard for that label. Harder than any man in this room will ever know. And uh, even if we act like we know, we don't. We don't know. You, al- you can always tell, you can always tell when a father doesn't understand what a mama is dealing with and the work that it takes to become a mama. You can always tell that when a father has not learned what that means yet by the way they react to a mama. Uh, What they do with her, for her, how that works. You can tell if they're beginner daddies or if they're novice or they're uh, 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 matured daddies. And it's a fun thing to watch when you see a mother come into her own and a father come into his own. But I can tell you this, it is by God's design. Every mama, every daddy, it's by God's design. I want to say this to you mamas in here. First of all, again, happy Mother's Day. But I want to say to those of you that want to be mamas and you're not, let my words strengthen you today. I'm telling you, even if in your mind, You think the moment is late. Even if in your mind you think that all things seem impossible, do not ever underestimate the God that you serve. Don't lose faith in what He wants to do and what He wants to do in His ways, in His way. You know, we become mothers and we do not, women do, (laughs) become mothers in very different ways. We become parents in different ways, I guess is a better way to put it. Sometimes it is natural. Sometimes it is uh, through adoption. Sometimes it, whatever it might be, sometimes we are, I feel like I'm parents to some children that aren't mine, neither biologically nor adopted, as some of you do. And you can always judge that by who comes over and feels free to get in your cabinets and eat your food. (laughs) Somehow you become a parent to them too. And uh, so it's a joy. But I want all of you to know, whether you are a mama now or you're a mother, that you're looking forward to that moment. I can tell you this. Continue to give God the glory. Continue to honor Him, and He will turn and honor you. I promise you, that is true every time. Well, I have some amazing ladies sitting on this platform with me today. So let me introduce to you, if you don't know already, who these ladies are. First of all, this is my wonderful wife, Kimberly Parker. This is Miss Tamara Phillips, who's been a friend of ours personally, and we met the way that we met her. We, I can't get into that, or we would be here all day, but just been a wonderful blessing for so many years. This is Miss Tamara Phillips. Give it up for Miss Tamara. And, and this is Miss Vanessa Batista, and I can tell you that Miss Vanessa is, uh, she, the way they came into this house is also a miracle on its own. Another story, another day, another time. Can't get into that. But these, this is my wife, but these are my sisters. And I'm so thankful for who they are and what they represent. Could you give it up for Miss Vanessa as well? So what I've decided to do today was to have them sit with me in this panel, and I'm going to ask them some questions and give them an opportunity to answer these questions from a mother's perspective. You know, a lot of times preaching is fruitless because preaching is always fruitless if it's answering questions that no one's asking. And, And it is also fruitless when a man tries to get up behind a pulpit and talk about what it's like to be a mama. And that's never going to serve its purpose well. So the best way to do that is to invite women who have been mamas, who have gone through both the joys and the challenges of being a mama, and who have come out the other side with testimony, and to invite them to share with you. So that's why I have invited them today. So I'm going to ask them questions and let them answer in whatever way they choose to. And uh, let me begin with this question. What does being a mother mean to you? (laughs) I'll go first. I'll go first. Um, Being a mother to me is um, taking care of an assignment. Um, I didn't always know that though, so I'm going to preface with saying that. um, That it's an assignment from Yahweh. Um, When he's entrusted you, whether it's naturally or surrogate, you know, even I have children who aren't necessarily biologically mine, but it's a responsibility when Yahweh has entrusted you with their lives and so that's what being a mother to me means so from the time that they're little or they've been assigned to you um 
it's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really the only word that I can say in the natural that sums it up. It's your responsibility as a mother to impart, uh, my responsibility to impart um, character, Yahweh's kingdom, their purpose, you know, and it's a huge responsibility, but I really see it as an assignment. That's great. That's great. Love that. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> I'll take it a step further, but um, exactly what you said, but, uh, you know, when there was a covenant on with Israel, um, there was times where God had to, you know, discipline and, and, and step in and and uh, con- I think even I believe that Yahweh considers things, you know, mm-hmm, absolutely. There's, there's just so many things that he had to do with Israel. And I do. I see it as an assignment as well, um, a- an assignment to empower. Um, and we, you know, we were kind of talking about this in the office earlier, but an, it's an assignment to empower and not to impose, mm-hmm. you know, because imposing, um, as I was saying earlier, is dependency. Mm. So I do. It's an assignment. It's an assignment of Yahweh that um, we see the fruit at the end, Mm. no matter what. Mm. So that's good. And I see being the keeper of the seed is kind of how I, that's my perspective. So I see it as the highest honor. I see it as a gift, something that is very precious, something that needs to be acknowledged, something that needs to be practiced, honored, but I think if it was just a one word, I would say that I see it as a complete honor Mm -hmm. to be a mother. It Mm -hmm. is an honor. It is an honorable place to walk through the things that you walk through as a mother. Mm -hmm. It is something that it's priceless. It is. It Mm -hmm. it is an honor. Mm -hmm. That's good. You know, I think about how when, when I sit here and, and every man in this room and whoever's watching online, the men, uh, when we hear what the answers that you are giving, what does it mean to be a mother? We can only identify with that from the perspective of the women we've been in relationship with, whether it be our own mother or our sisters who are mothers or people that we know who are mothers. We can only identify with it from the perspective that we see. But, you know, as a husband, one of the great joys that I've had in watching you specifically is how you... Uh, what, uh, nurture our kids in such a way that they're, it's, it's, it's almost what Vanessa said, it's guidance. It's guidance. Um, you're not, you don't force them. You've not forced them into a certain way, but you've guided them. And what, man, what a joy. Because if for a father to step in and try to be a mother is as impossible as a mother trying to step in and be a father. Even a single parent home, if you're a mama, don't try to be a mama and a daddy. Yeah. If you're a single parent daddy, don't try to be a daddy and a mama. Be what you are. Yeah, Yahweh, will, Yahweh will provide the answer for the yeah, other part. Yeah. And um, so I agree with all of you, and I'm, I'm thank you for your answers because it is an assignment and it is not an imposition. Um, it, again, even even in that word, in that term, I think about you give a man a fish, you, you you feed him for a day. You teach a man to fish, feed him for a lifetime. So you can impose the fish upon him, or you can show him the way. And for a lifetime, he's fed. It's it's powerful. Billy Graham made this statement. He said, "Only God Himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother." in the molding of character in her children. Let me read it again. Only God himself fully appreciates the influence of a Christian mother in the molding of character in her children. In Proverbs 22, 6 says this. It says, train up a child in the way he should go, and even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Over the years of ministry, 33 years of ministry, I've been asked many times, what does that mean? I have my own perspective of what that means, but I'm going to ask you, what does that scripture mean to you? Tell the moms that are listening out here and even the fathers that um, might be wondering, tell us what does that scripture mean to you? If I train up my children in the way they should go when they are old, they will not depart from it. What does that mean? For me, this was really, really hard um, because I was not raised in a righteous home. So not being raised in a righteous home um, and recognizing through Yahweh, for sure, um, that, you know, this is not the way. Um, So I didn't really have a good reference point. um, And that's really difficult to navigate. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm in the kingdom, it's it's still difficult because I feel like I'm still uh, reconciling things and trying to train up in the same way, in the right way, mm-hmm. you know, but 
Um, what that means is, the first thing is that my kids cannot be like me. They have to be better. But if you're in the kingdom, better is not even enough. You know, oh, that's good. That's Yahweh, good. what Yahweh's purpose is, is, is the only option. That's good. You know, so for me, it's that. It's Yahweh's way. Mm -hmm. Train up the kid in Yahweh's way and they will never mm -hmm. depart from him. Mm -hmm. You know, not in what my reference point was, not in what I'm trying to fix that I'm never going to come up with an answer for myself. I'm never going to be able to come up with that thing. Yeah. But Yahweh can. Yes. He has it. Yeah. It's already in the books, you know, so... So, really, train up a child in the way he should go is our part. When he is old, he will not depart from it is Yahweh's part. Mm -hmm. So, we have our, if we're faithful in our part, he will be faithful in his. That's right. So, is there anything you guys want to add to that? Well, I, to me, I think about Alex when she, and I'm going young here because some moms in here have little toddlers. But I remember she didn't talk much because Kaylee talked for her. So... <laughs> It's she still just, mostly true. <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of hung out. You know, she didn't say a lot. And, and it was very important for me to receive my children in the way that they came, who they were. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to make them something. I wanted to know, what are you? Who are you? What was sent into the earth for me to help nurture? So because of that, um, she was the one that, because she didn't talk, and she really didn't cry much, and she went and got in her bed when it was it's time. True. To sleep you know she just was no trouble yeah. so there was not a lot of um that communication in that regard so i remember one time i thought i told steve i said look you take kaylee and josh and i'm taking alex and we're gonna go get ice cream because i need her to talk to me i need to know her because relationship to me in in our part is the key mm -hmm. and and it's not um forcing them to be me a lot like she said you don't, I don't want you to be me, but who are you and why were you given to me? Mm -hmm. And so she sat across the table from me licking her ice cream cone, never said a word, mm -hmm. <laughs> never said a word. But you know, I thought, well, this means something to her. And my mom used to call it tying strings because I would make opportunities to tie strings with each one, with Joshua, with Kaylee, with Alex, in the way that it was important to them. And it was, they're all three very different. Mm -hmm. And so navigating those differences is very important. But I feel like that's a, that's a very, that's a pathway that sometimes gets overlooked with the busyness of life. Right. So it, it can be inconvenient mm -hmm. sometimes, especially if you have multiple children and you're just trying to figure everything out. But if you can make that important, mm -hmm. take one child for the one week if you have to and focus on that child and tie strings and find ways to minister to their soul and to draw out of them what they, how do they see the world. Mm -hmm. And then as they get older and they see your relationship with Yahweh, mm -hmm. they want to please you, which most children do. Then as they get older, there's a, there's a stepping over into God becoming, instead of being mama's God, mm -hmm. becoming their God. That's right. And so you can assist that because now you have a relationship. You have these strings that even in those rough spots where maybe the teenage years where they're seeing things for their own and you, and you honor their independence, mm -hmm. you know, keep them safe, but yeah. you honor that independence and, and allow them to express themselves the way they were created. Mm -hmm. And I believe in doing that and not trying to choke them and, and keep them in a box and know you're not doing this and that and the other, um, I think that relationship shines through above those places. Amen. That's good. That's good. Do you have anything you want to add to? Yeah, just real quick. With, with that verse to me is a promise, really, because I really held fast to that particular verse in my rearing of my children. That's a very um, personal verse to me because I did not have all the answers. My mother was wonderful. She was a godly woman, um, and she raised us, in my opinion, how we should go, go how mm -hmm. we should go, and we didn't yeah. depart. So I knew that that, that meant something. Yeah. And so, to me, first the natural, we talk about that, then the spirit. And for me, in our household, you know, with my children, 
you know, I didn't have all the answers as far as what, what were the special things that I could do for each other, but I had some real practical things, like giving them responsibilities, um, like holding them accountable, yeah. um, making them worship. I mean, I know that might sound to some people like, oh, you're making them, you're forcing them. But I want to be clear, like in my heart and in my mind for my children, I knew that they were marked by Yahweh right, to change right, the earth. Right. Yeah. So if I neglected, just as, just as I made them do their homework, yeah. you know, just as I made them go to school and respect their teachers, it was very important to, to me to make sure they understood that you belong to Yahweh. Amen. You right now don't have a choice. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> you belong to Yahweh. You know, you will worship. Yeah. And we didn't just do that at church, you know, so let me be clear. That was not something that was just when we came to church. Oh, we get up and we worship. Oh, we pray at church. We, we present this front. But in my home, I turned on the worship music. I made them get the drums out. I made them get up. I made them pray. I made them learn how to, to have a conversation with Yahweh when they were little. You know, and that was a, a part. And I believe that that training part, you know, sometimes might seem like, you know, to some people might seem, oh, you know, you're making them, you're forcing them. But I want to be clear, it's not when you require your children to worship Yahweh and you require your children to honor Yahweh, you know, you are training them up in the way they should go. And when they're old, that part to me is so beautiful yeah. because lots of times, you know, there's that question like, oh, you know, and, and, and in our, you know, no matter what stage you are in life with your children, then you're going to come to a moment where you're going to say, oh, where did I go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, are they going to make it, you know? Uh, but I would always go back to that. Yeah. Train up a child. And that doesn't mean I did everything right. right. So let me be clear right. about that too. Because there were many things I wish I would have done differently or would have known to do or understood to we're, do. We're glad he overlooks our ignorance. So often. glad, yeah. so glad. So to me, it is a promise. You can hold on to that promise. When you put your 100% Amen. into training your children, yeah. when they are old, they will not depart. That's right. Yes. You know, when I think about that, yes, amen. Yes. I think about that part of the verse, too, when, you know, the first part is us, the second part is Yahweh. But I think about that part, that second part, when they are old, they will not depart from it. But the promise isn't always that they won't depart from serving Him. It is that they will not ever forget your training. When they are old, they, no matter what their age, they will never forget the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. often people have asked me, you know, my kids are older and they're still not serving the Lord. I said, but they have not forgotten your training. Right. If you were faithful in what you sowed into them, they have not forgotten yeah. and they will not forget. And it will always be between the child and Yahweh what they do. But your part was in the beginning and you sow that into them like each of these have said, you you sow that in and you put it as seed in the fertile soil of their heart and Yahweh will honor that. Yeah. He will turn and yeah. he will honor that. And as Kim said, you know, I, I remember our, watching our kids and I'll move to the next thing, but I remember uh, with our kids many, many times there were, you know, we would train them right and we would do everything we knew to do and, and we, I would hold them, her, her or I, we would grab them by the, you've heard me tell this story, we'd grab them by the head and well, we'd say several things to them. One, we would say, you are not in charge. I am. And then we would say one day, he won't be mom and dad's God. He will become your God. And in that day, you're going to be accountable to him for yourself. And then one last thing I want to interject in there. When we were going through a season with Kaylee, if you're a mama, and, and, and I need them to do most of the talking, but I can't help but say that. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that time I was a mom and, and I, uh, but I remember Kim and I sitting across the table from Tim and Liz Darnell many years, 20 years ago, a long time ago, probably more than 20 years ago. And we were going through a, a challenging season with, with our oldest child, Kaylee. And uh, we were sharing some things with Tim and Liz and, and Liz said the statement that I have said over and over, I've preached it in other churches. I've never preached it here because it's her message, but over, out there I can preach it. <laughs> and, um, and I tell the story and, and she simply said this, she said, outlast them. That's right. Yeah. Simply outlast them. You stay your course and outlast them. And we, we have done that. So Wait, I have something you know, okay. else. I think it's important because it, it made me think about your role with Kaylee specifically. But the demonstration in the training 
I can't, I don't think we should overlook that. So that it, you know, to say do this, do that, do this is good. But for them to see you, like Tamara saying, I'm pulling the drums out, I'm dancing in my kitchen, I, that demonstration, you mm. can't overlook that. Right. And no, so I was just sitting here thinking about how some people have a hard time when it comes to Holy Spirit. They mm. ask Jesus into their heart, they are saved, and now they want to know Holy Spirit. And that seems to be a mountain to some. They don't quite understand mm. it. It's weird to them. But I thought about with Kaylee, when you would pray in the Spirit, and, and you demonstrated this is how you pray when you don't know the words mm -hmm. in English to pray. And you would pace the floor, and she was about Raiden's age, really, and just yeah. she'd toddle behind you, and she'd put her little hands up. And then one day, she began to speak in tongues. In a hotel room. In a hotel yeah. room. And, and she didn't stop. Mm -hmm. you know. And we thought at first it wasn't what it was, but it was. Yeah. And so she was filled with Holy Spirit by following your demonstration and she never backed down. Because it was never weird to her. It was never, it was never odd to her. Right. It was never foreign to her. It, right. was, it was demonstrated and yeah. the seed produced fruit. Yes. That's great. That's a good word. Um, so what are some of the challenges that mothers face today when they raise children? Help all these mamas. So, very, very broad question. But when, let's try to stay on point, but what are some of the challenges? Just mention something perhaps that's a personal experience with you that is, it can be current or it can be past, but what are some of the challenges and how did you deal with it if there's something that you're comfortable sharing? How did you address that challenge from the perspective of the kingdom of God? Okay, I'll take it first. I'm going to go with the young ones. <laughs> See, here, let me say this before she starts. See, I give them an idea of the questions I'm going to ask, but they never know when I'm going to rearrange those questions, and, and that's what I, I just I did. don't know the questions, which is great. But, um, <laughs> but for me, so you have your first baby, and it's just wonderful, and it's just you and your baby and you and your husband. You're figuring out your roles and how things work and who's doing bath time and who's reading and who's dressing them and all this. And then number two comes. So then it's a little tighter because now we each have Number one. two being the second child. Number two being the second child. <laughs> the, the second child comes, and, uh, which is a, a very good experience. However, if you come to church, all of a sudden, you know, you're getting this one ready and then you get this one ready and then this one's, you know, pooped all over the place and then you still haven't even had a shower yet and so you're just trying to get everything in the car to get to church on time and look like that you're holy you know and um and so it becomes a it can be frustrating yeah. uh for and then you have three and you know whatever so it's important to me in those times to communicate with your spouse um if you're married it's good. i mean if you're a single mom well, you're just gonna have to figure it out but but I think there's thing good things you can do like just practically speaking you can lay out clothes you can have your shower the night before you know just plan ahead don't wing it but um, that will eliminate some of the frustration yeah. I think that that comes in marriage in a lot of young couples that have you know children I think that planning ahead thinking ahead um, for the husband to understand mom, if you, if you nurse, I'm just gonna be raw. If, you, if you're up all night and, and you're feed, or feeding bottles, whatever, um, you know, for the man to step in and help some is good. Um, I do believe that it is, you know, a joint responsibility Absolutely, for the yeah. baby. Absolutely. But, um, but I do think planning ahead, just mm -hmm. to answer the question, will eliminate some frustration because I see that as more children enter the home, there's a greater uh, opportunity for frustration mm -hmm. between mom mm -hmm. and dad. It, for in a moment that should be enjoyed. Yes. And, uh, I hear an somebody. amen corner back here. <laughs> Men don't even say anything. <laughs> That's me. That's good. That was really good. Anybody else? What are some of the challenges mothers face today? I'll go. Uh, there, there's challenges. Um, <laughs> I'm going to speak more to the transitional of age challenges. 
So, you know, you go from little to the, yes, and then you have a wide range. I had three kids, and, um, you know, you go from the range from they're small, then they become adolescents, and then the teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> then, the, then even the transition into their own families and marriage and children. And um, just speaking from myself, I'll start with my, probably my oldest son when he, that was the hardest, I think, for me to transition because me and him were, I felt like we kind of grew up together because we started our family very young. Um, so when he was about to transition into college and into that phase of his life, it was really difficult for me because he was making choices, you know, not bad, bad choices, but choices I didn't necessarily <laughs> I think we're right. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> and, you know, as a mother, you know, from the time that they're little, it is you are directing their life. You are engaged. Right, it is right. really your entire life or your children. And so everything you plan, everything you process is through the filter of your children. And then when it's time for that divide, which is right and holy and good, to happen, whoo! It can be hard. It can be really hard. And I remember at the time, because I am kind of a younger mother, and so a lot of the mothers that are around my age were not necessarily experiencing what I was experiencing when I was experiencing with Jordan. <laughs> you know, he was, he was getting in, you know, engaged and about to have a baby, and he's getting married, and I'm like, my baby, this is my baby, what is happening? You know, inwardly, I wasn't showing that outwardly, or so I thought. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, <laughs> my husband is going, oh. Thank you, Yahweh, for my husband, because he was definitely my anchor during this time. <laughs> but I remember being here in this house, and I was worshiping, you know, just doing what I do. And I, I don't know if it was by the Spirit, but my sweet mama Karen, she saw. She saw by the Spirit what I was going through. This is why it's important that we have each other as moms. Yeah, that's good. Like, we're not isolated and, and by ourselves. And I remember she was like, Tamara, sometimes when Matt... Was, was, uh, she said, uh, when he was going through that transition in life, she didn't say it like that, but she was basically saying, you know, when he was growing up, when he was growing up, she said, I would just get my pillow, put it to my face, and scream. <laughs> <laughs> you were not, you were not you a bad child, Matt. But, but as mamas, and it may not even be bad things, you guys. I'm not talking about bad things. Sir. I'm talking about just, you'll see, when your children become but start transitioning into adulthood, you know, and they don't need you like they needed you before. They need you in a different way. It can be very difficult to navigate. And you know, you're so vocal in their lives anyways. And you know, when they're like, mom, I got this, I'm good. I don't need you. That's difficult, that's yeah. difficult. And you know, they do need you. <laughs> Cause they're not doing it right. <laughs> That's a difficult place to navigate. So, you know, really also I just wanted to, to say to, you know, don't be afraid to draw yeah. from those who have gone Good. before you yeah. because sometimes you think you know what you're about to go into, but you have no idea. Yeah. And then when you're there, you feel alone or you feel like you've done something wrong, you know? So I just think that's important to that's draw good. on each other. It's good, really good. Um, I've certainly drawn from both of you. <laughs> um, you know, I've had to ask some hard questions. And, and let me tell you, I'm not a ask for help kind of person. And so I had to like, re weeks, I'd look at Miss, Miss Kim and say, oh, I, I really want to ask her that thing. And then one day, you know, I came up to Miss Kim and I'm like, Miss Kim, this is what I'm going through. She said, I went through the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, but yeah, definitely don't um, not ask, right, right. you know, right. you don't know what you don't know. My husband says that to me all the time. You don't know until you know it, right? Yeah, that's good. Um, but one of the challenges for me is that I feel like the world has this like really shiny thing right in front of their face. And it's this thing called freedom, mm -hmm. but it's not a freedom in the kingdom. It's a freedom of the world. Mm -hmm. And they desire that freedom so much without even knowing what freedom is, mm -hmm. what real freedom is. So I think one of the challenges for me is really knowing when to let, <laughs> let God, let Yahweh just, mm -hmm. and then saying, I have to put this boundary for your safety yeah. because I know better than you, yeah. period. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's there's right. no, there's no dot, dot, period. You know, so for me, that's, <laughs> I just know. Um, 
we have three girls in a row. So we have 24, uh, 19 going on 20, 16 going on 17, 13, and four. So I have one in every single stage. And um, another challenge is learning how to counsel each one of them. It's different. Mm -hmm, it is. You know, my oldest is going to come to me and say, this is what I'm going through. And I'm like, you're a man. Now, can I help you process the information? Can I help you give you a demonstration of what we would walk, how would we, we would walk this out? But I can't tell you what to do, right? And then there's the one that's transitioning from, from going into a teenager into manhood, you know? and reminding them that there are still things that you can do prematurely. Just because the world says at 18 you can do this right. thing doesn't mean that it's the right thing. Right, right. And then I have the ones that are going from younger teens to like an older teen, and I'm like, okay, we really got to slow this down. <laughs> like, pump your brakes. <laughs> and then the little one who was watching everybody else. You know, the two younger ones that are watching everything else. So there's a standard. I think that the, the other challenge is the standard that you have to hold. It's Not good. because, you know, the older one is going to do what they're going to do. But guess what? If you live in my home, you have to be a standard to the kids that are younger. Because, I mean, that's just the way it is. Period. Another period. Really good. <laughs> Very good. You know, there was a, when our kids were coming up, there was a book, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, To Train Up a Child, I think, was that the name of it? To Train Up a Child? And I don't even know if that's still available today or not for parents, but um, it was a book that was judged so harshly by so many because it is so much a very direct approach to parenting. And uh, anybody that's familiar with that book, you'll know what I'm talking about. And that leads me into the scripture that I want to share in James chapter 3, 1, that seems like the scripture is displaced in regard to uh, talking today from a perspective of a mother, but it's not. And, and, and I'll, I'll help you understand why, and then I'm going to ask you a question. So James 3, 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers. And it says, My brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. Not many of you should become teachers because you know that those, who, those of us who teach will be judged with greater strictness. And when I think about that, and I was putting this scripture in here, um, as I thought about that, I thought about a mother because I have known you and I've known many of you in this room that you have taken positions with your children that others have judged as that's too strict. They're not giving them enough freedom or their whatever, um, and they've been based on the approach of teaching their children, because we can agree on this. Mothers teach. Can we agree on that? A mother that isn't teaching isn't a mother at all. So if there's a teacher and if there's a teaching heart in us to, to teach and to train our children, I've watched a lot of mothers be judged for the way that they do it. And one of the things that I've said in times past is to people who have said something in, in a judgmental way towards someone that I know very well and I know the children very well, as I've said, I'd measure their kids up against any of yours any day of the week. Put your kids up against theirs, up against a wall, and I can tell you who's going to heaven and who's headed straight to hell. I mean, it's that clear. It's often that clear. You know what? Spare the rod, spoil the child. I see this one here didn't, wasn't ashamed of the rod. This one was afraid of it. And I can see a difference. And I'm just, I'm just loosely using this. Don't, don't judge me. I'm not the mom today. And, uh, but when I think about this, not many of you should become teachers because you're going to, and I'm paraphrasing now, but not many of you should become teachers because you're going to be judged in a stricter way. So a mother has to come into being a mother and stand her ground. Not only with our children, but we st how often do you find yourselves or do you ever find yourselves having to stand your ground with the perceptions that others have of you, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be whomever, people even in the church world that look at you and say, you need to get your hands off. You know, you're not helped. What do you do when as a teacher you are teaching, you are training, you are raising up. How do you react to those moments when others are pointing their finger at you? And most of the time, those pointing aren't mothers at all. But how do you react to that? Do you have anything you want to add to that or share with that? I have a perfect example of that. One of the things that we did with our children is we, did, we never gave them a cell phone until they were 18 and could pay for it by themselves. Great. You know, and our family are, well, oh my gosh, they don't have a phone. Well, how do we call them? Well, you call me. 
Because guess what? Where my kids are, I am, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but, um, but I've changed my perspective recently, right? So, Brianna is my task doer. She has lists. Every day she has her shirt and her pants and her jewelry, her deodorant, her perfume set out right before her. I know that she's a kid of priority. And, you know, Mina might not have a cell phone, but I have allowed Brianna to have an iPhone watch. Why? Because when she gets to a place, she says, Mom, I've arrived. Mom, we're going to be late. Mom, I'm going to be, you know, I'm, we're early. We're, whatever. She's the communicator. Right. So, you know, a lot of people would probably judge me now knowing and saying, well, why did Brianna get to do that prematurely? She didn't get to do it prematurely, first of all. She's very mature, and that's why she has it. That's good. But, you going, know, going are, back to yeah. what you said earlier, just because they're 18 doesn't mean they can do 18-year-old things yeah, or whatever. It, because anything done prematurely is done wrong. Right. And I, I know that. You know, yeah. so, um, yeah, but that is a perfect example of that, you know, good. so, but now Christian has his own cell phone, you know, Gino has his own cell phone and, you know, they can do with it That's as, good. you know, as they, they can or have to. That's right? good. And the same is true of social media. The parents that choose, you know what, you're not going to be on. So I don't care if the world has social media. You're just not old enough to do it. I don't want, or I'm not comfortable. You might be old enough, you know, I'm not comfortable with it. So it's a position that you might be judged by, but as a mother, you're a teacher. So what do I want to teach my kids? Yeah. I think that's great. I was going to speak to the part where, you know, where people might look at you and, you know, judge what you're doing, how you're doing. You know, you are anointed. I'm just, yeah. You are anointed to raise your children. That's right. Nobody else. That's Yahweh right. didn't assign them to anybody else. That's and sometimes, right. it's, it, sometimes you can look at other people and say, oh, they've got it all together. Oh, they did that so, so great. No, but you are anointed. So, so That's your, right. your, the way that you do things, the way that Yahweh leads you yeah. to correct, to direct, to train your children, you are marked for that. And they're going to receive that, whether it looks like they're receiving it in the moment or not. I can't tell you how many times my children, my oldest child, my all the way down to my, my sweet AJ, you know, thank you, mom and dad. Thank you. Oh, oh hold on. My Jordan, my Sydney, she is the middle child for real, y'all. <laughs> and my AJ. <laughs> How many times they come back and they thank me and their, their dad for the, the discipline and for the lines that we drew. And for a lot of people, we drew really hard lines. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there was a quick story I'll tell that I thought was so funny. Me and me and my husband forgot, but he was real big. My husband and I about chores, and so AJ his 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 requirement at the time was to take out the trash, and he was playing uh, football at the time, and so they were get, I guess about to go out to a game. We totally forgot about this, but he was about to go to a game. They were all huddled up, and the coach came and said, um, AJ, uh, come over here for a second. You have to sit on the bench. <laughs> Well, why? Because your dad called me and told me you did not take out the trash. <laughs> we have totally blocked and forgot about all those things at this stage in our life. However, you know, there were things that sometimes seemed harsh, you know, um, even, you know, the demonstration that we demonstrated like our children never heard us say curse words, never saw us drinking. And I'm just saying these as practical things. They never saw us. Um, being ungodly and I'm just saying that to say that the demonstration and what other people say I'm like y'all do what you want to do this right. is my house and these right. are my kids That's right. you know and there is that lion that protection yeah. that a mother has you know so if you don't have that ask Yahweh to give you that fire for your children you know for the kingdom because really it doesn't matter what anybody thinks you are anointed to raise your children did you have something you want to add well I just agree with that because yeah. they're not my judge, you yeah. know, I, because I do, I do want to be judged. I'm not one that runs from judgment. What I'm doing, how I'm, you know, who I am, uh, how I participate in relationships, how I raise my children, I want that to be judged, but he's judging me, mm -hmm. not them. So mm -hmm. it's not that I, I really don't care what anybody right. thinks. Right. I really haven't ever cared about right. what people think about how I raise my kids. Right. That's just an honest answer. I haven't. I know, and I've had a front row seat, and that's true. That's true. So, Can I add something to yes. what Ms. Tamara said? Um, and for those of you, you know, my kids have seen me do things that, you know, maybe I'm not proud of, 
But with Yahweh, there's no lost time. Yes. Right. There's right. no lost time. We don't lose time. So if there's anybody in here that's like, don't leave here today feeling like you're a failure. That's right. right. Because that's right. with Yahweh, when so you good. say yes and you repent, so good. there is no lost time. Your kid will be exactly where they Amen. need to be. That's right. Right when they need Amen. to be there. Well said. There's a scripture that I'll, I'll just paraphrase, but he, Yahweh said, sacrifice and offering I do not desire but it's your obedience. And, and when I think about a parent, I think about a mother specifically. You know, there's this, from the time, before you're a mom, your schedule is your own. Your life is your own. You do whatever you want, whenever you want to, and, and it, it is your own. But when you become a mother, suddenly things shift. The priority is no longer my wants. The prior, and, and I'm, and I'm going to rephrase that in just a moment. But in the beginning, the sense is the priority is no longer my wants. The priority is my child. But then that changes and you begin to realize that as I've watched my wife and I've seen this actually happen is the wants are, it's no longer about my wants. My want is right. what the child needs. Yeah. And so there is no sacrifice. It, th th being a mother is not a sacrifice of the, what I want to be or where I want to be. Being, there's no sacrifice. The joy is in being a mama. Would that be true yes. of each of you? So I'm going to ask you just one more question and then um, and make a statement and ask one more question and then we'll, we'll wrap it up so everybody can be with their moms. But you guys have been incredible and absolutely amazing. But there is a... Go ahead. So Billy Sunday in uh, the 1800s was a professional baseball player, played in the National League. And he was a professional baseball player that got saved and then became an evangelist in the early 1900s, first couple decades. I think he, he died in the 1930s, I think. But in the first couple decades, he was an evangelist that was well known. But he said something that I think is just profoundly incredible. And he said, I don't believe there are devils enough in hell to pull a child out of the arms of a godly mother. Amen. And you think about... Is a, a statement like that, that man, you know what, when, when a mama loves her children like Yahweh loves his, because mamas do, they love those children like Yahweh loves them, and there's not enough devils in hell to pull a child out of the hands of a godly mother. So I want to ask you this question. Um, when you find yourself in a position, or let me, let me ask it differently. Do you ever feel like you are... Do you ever feel like you come to the place as your children grow up where you stop parenting or are you always a mother with that in mind? They're in my hand. I'm a godly mother and they're in my hand. Is there ever a point where you feel like it's now hands off? Or is it always a sense of they're always going to be mine and I'm going to fight for them. There's not enough devils in hell that can pull these kids out of my hands. Is there ever a point where there's a transition where you feel like do the best you can? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, no, I think it. I think as a mother, you mature with the children. So as they are adults now, ours are adults. I feel like my relation with them is sweeter because I don't have to correct and make sure you know everything right. is just. Yeah. That's what I felt like was my responsibility. You know, as a as a mother, now my responsibility has shifted to supporting what they're doing. And what's important to them. But I absolutely would never be like, you're on your own. Is it your God? Whatever you want to do. There's no way. <laughs> no, no. And I knew, I knew the answer would be that with each of you. But I think for parents that are out there thinking, you know, at some point you take your hands off. And let me adjust this question even a little bit more. Because I've seen in time and I've known people that have taken this position. We did not. You do what you want. But we never positioned ourselves to be friends of our children. We were always determined to be parents of our children. Uh, and if, if there came a point where we had to decide it was going to be a friendly moment or a parenting moment, parenting was the choice. And um, so when, what would you say be, to a parent who feels like, you know what, they're going to, I just want to take the perspective of a friend with my children as they're growing up. And this is a question I'm throwing on your very left field. But as, and, um, anyway, let me ask it. <laughs> be friends with my children and if I, I believe if I'm friends with my children then they'll do well. How would you address that because there's a lot of people that feel that way that feel like the best approach is to, is to be friendly and, and we're going to be friendly not friends. That's the difference. So 
I'm going to be friends. I'm going to be their friend. I'm not going to worry about uh, making sure to discipline them. I'm going to let them find their self, find their own way, and I'm going to hope for the best. I'm going to, they're going to see me pray. They're going to see me read scripture. They're going to see me go to church. But if they choose not to go to church, they choose not. I'm just going to be their friend and hope that they get it together. What would you say? To a parent that takes that position, because I can promise you this, under the sound of our voice right now, there are parents taking that position. I'll, I'll totally speak to that. Um, in fact, somebody has a shirt on today, and I thought about it, uh, when it pertains to, to parent. And that's Miss, her shirt says, relentless. Oh, I'm so glad you didn't say, I'm a friend of my children. <laughs> no, it says relentless. And that's actually one of my favorite words, uh, along with consider, which has become one of my favorite words. But um, I think that, you know, for me personally, as my children have grown up um, and I have had to shift and adjust how I, how I parent, I think of course I do not ever see myself ever stopping parenting because I always see my children as my children, they're my babies. I call Absolutely. them my babies. Um, but I think that whenever you take a position of just being a friend and it's not, it's not initiated from your children as adults, it's off. And I'm not saying that to say you shouldn't be friendly with your children. Friendly and friend is different. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But you back to, you know, it is your assignment to to make sure that 100 percent they are positioned in a way that they can be functional human beings, but also that they can serve Yahweh and be part of his ever increasing kingdom. And if that's not at the root of your parenting, that that's should good. be at the Very root good. of your parenting. So that's really the first Step. So if you put that at the root, then really your everything that you do is coming from that place. So you can be relentless when you sometimes feel like just being their friend because it's sometimes hard to, to, to be disciplined and say, no, you can't do that. Sorry. I know that's how you feel, but no, not going to happen. Nope, we're not doing it that way. Nope, we're going to do it this way. And sometimes you get, that wears you out. So it's easy to sometimes say, go ahead and do it. Go on and watch that. Go ahead and see, go ahead and go with those friends. Everybody else is doing it. But be relentless yeah, because good. when you see, and Kim had mentioned it earlier, when you see the purpose in your child, when Yahweh reveals that, it's your responsibility to nurture that garden, to pour that water so that that can bloom. And, you know, I was speaking with, I think it was Miss Liz and Mama Karen this morning, how, you know, you see your children and your grandchildren and the, the fruit of those seeds that, it, no, you couldn't see them. You couldn't see them when they were in the ground. You couldn't see what they were going to become. But the faithfulness, the relentlessness yes, to yes. say, I will not. This is the line. Yeah. You will stay here. I love you. You so don't have good. to like me. But I love you, and love draws lines. Yes. Love yes. gives direction because I, I don't ever want to see my children out there in the world eating and right. drinking of the world. That to me is is that would kill me. That right. I mean I'm just being honest. That would hurt my heart. So when you know when you're at that place where you have to make a choice, and it might feel your soul might even feel sorry for them or, or want to give in to it. Don't give in. Be relentless. Be stand up so they can see your shirt. Be relentless. <laughs> Relentless, relentless mamas, be relentless. And even if you, you know, I, I will just say this, my husband was a really big part of me being relentless because there were times when I wanted to say, oh, well, just, that seems so hard. And he would say, absolutely not, absolutely not. And you know, for single moms out there, you know, it's okay so to, to make a draw on the men in this house because we have some strong men yeah. in this house, Matt Hoffman and James. And we have some strong men, of course, our, our visionary. You know, and make a draw sometimes. If you feel tired or you're like, oh, they're wearing me out. The kids are wearing me out. Call on a, a godly man to right, help you. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's good. That's good. There's a statement. I don't know who it's from, so I'm hesitant to make, try to, so it's not a quote. I'm going to paraphrase. I don't know who said this, um, but it was said a long time ago. But they said something about children being, parents being friends to their children. And the statement went something like, if you're a friend to your children, if you're a friend to your children now, you'll be an enemy of your children later. You'll be the enemy of your children later. And, uh, and I think that that's such a profound in, in relationship to what this conversation has, has produced. And I can tell you today that as I've watched each of you, the reason you're on this panel today is because I know your children. Because I know your seed. Your seed have eaten out of my cabinet. And um, so... I know, I know what you have produced and I know what you represent. And you are, you are, you are the kind of mother that 
loves, that directs, that teaches, that sows seed, that is faithful, that is enduring, that is dependable in every way. And I want to read one last scripture that I think is, is I, I love this scripture because it really reflects on the mother of Christ. And it says this in Luke chapter 2, verse 51. It says, And he, Jesus, went down with them, his parents, and he came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all the things she saw in her heart. She held as treasure in her heart what she saw her child becoming. And I think that is a statement of every true mother, that she comes to a place where she treasures in her heart what she sees her children becoming. You have been, you guys have been amazing. Your answers have been incredible. Have you enjoyed this? Come on, put your hands together. I am... Um, as I sit here, you know, and I ask you questions from a man's, from a father and a man's perspective, I was thinking on Father's Day, maybe we'll have a, a lady sit in this seat and be, ask the questions of a few men and um, coming from a perspective where uh, that's different. But uh, I can tell you that you represent the very best of motherhood. And I'm so thankful that in this house we have moms that are raising up those children each in different ways, but when we raise them up to honor and to love Him, it will never depart from their process. They will never be able to escape or be able to say, I did not know. They will always know, and then Yahweh can turn, that, turn them back to Him. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on, put your hands together one more time. Stand with me this morning, if you would, please. Again, if you're watching online, I want to thank you for being a part with us today. We wish all of our mamas a happy, happy Mother's Day. Kids, bless your mamas today. Speak to them, share with them, tell them you love them, tell them how special they are. Tell them thank you for all the times they made you take out the trash or whatever it is they made you do. All the times that they got in your face, all the times they didn't let you get on the internet, whatever it might be. Thank them. They didn't let you get on the computer games. It was worth it. It will be worth it. You don't. Don't try to win the battles with mama. Let mama win and I promise you, you will be better for it. Amen? Amen. Glorify the Father by honoring your mamas. Honor your mamas today. Honor your mamas. Father, I lift my voice over the people of this house. I lift my voice over every mama in here, over every daddy, over every child. I'm thankful today that as we gather together, as we hear your word, as we see the fruit of your word and these three ladies that have shared today their viewpoint, their perspective of being a mama, I thank you that from their perspective we can see how the hand of God rules and reigns in the lives of children if we will simply submit who we are to you. Thank you for your goodness and for your anointing. We celebrate this day. We celebrate the mamas that you gave us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I bless you today.